Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? The more long-term viewers out of you will recognize this driveway. If you're new, welcome and welcome to the hills above Monaco. I've come down here for a few days for some work, filming a documentary TV show type thing and we filmed some of it down here. When I arrived down here, I was actually greeted by a rather lovely surprise, which is right there next to me. You can probably tell by the title. Before we get to that though, let me update you. I said it in my last video. I know I haven't been posting that much, that is going to change. I'm going to be posting more to keep you updated, whether they be short videos, long videos, there may be some three, four minute videos. Literally things I wouldn't normally film, I'm just going to grab a camera, take it with me and film it and post it online. Let me know if you like this format, you'll get more posts, but they may not be like 10 minutes. It'll be more sort of just bringing you guys along on a bit more of my daily life. Anywho, I'm dying to drive this car. Let me give you a little bit of background first. A little while ago, my mother and I surprised my father for his birthday with a Porsche Macan, which was a dream come true because he's always dreamed of having a Porsche. Wow. Happy birthday. Wow. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. Wow. The fact that they now live in Switzerland and go skiing, they needed a four-wheel drive car, they've got a dog, so they needed space for the dog. All this stuff meant that the Porsche Macan made sense. Sadly though, and I know you guys are gonna think this is funny because if you've been around for a long time, you know I've already had my Lotus Elise, which I used to own, stolen in Paris. The Porsche Macan also got stolen. I'm really not lucky with this stuff. I can't make this up. We managed to find it again. So twice that I've had cars stolen, and we found them twice. So lucky, I guess, in that regard. However, the car was basically screwed. It had had an accident, and they'd been driving it with a flat tire for ages. So the car needed lots of reparations. We decided in the end it was smarter to get the insurance money back and buy a second hand other car. And I personally think it is a massive step up. I've got a mic on here, so you'll be able to hear the startup. Try and listen to the startup, pause the video, Comment down below, don't cheat and skip to the back of the video. Comment down below what you think it is just on the startup and I'll be liking the comments of those who got it right. Let's go get that. I'm gonna grab this. A 2016 Porsche Panamera GTS. I absolutely love this car. I was never a huge Panamera fan until I actually got a go in this, but I personally think, my humble opinion, that this is the Panamera to go for. Give you a little walk around the outside so you can see. It is in a dark gray color with the tinted back windows and all blacked out around the windows and with the pillars here as well. Everything blacked out on the outside apart from this little rim bit on the outside of the rim. The rim's rim, is that what you'd call it? Red calipers, steel, not carbon ceramics. Blacked out here as well. Uh, all of this comes with GTS, massive red calipers in the front. It's got the updated front end, so it's got two LED lights right here. It's got the optional PDLS, I think they're called lights, um, where you've got these like four dots. It looks very, very nice. Yes, before I get too many questions, it is on Geneva plates. That's because my parents live in Geneva. Currently we're in Monaco, but they've just driven down for a holiday. They're here for a couple of weeks. Same thing around this side in terms of the exterior. Oh yes, this by the way, uh, before you guys comment about it, the piano black wing, that does go back in. I'm just a bit of a yobbo, so I have it out. GTS, you can also tell by the tinted lights back here, slightly tinted rear lights. Now this one's been debadged, which I think is actually very cool. So you just have the Porsche logo on the back, but you can't really know it's a GTS unless you know. And round back, it's got the quad black exhaust tips, which look lovely. Show you the interior. The interior is actually really nice. It's got this brown leather interior, so it's got the full leather pack. It's also got the sport seats. That comes with the GTS. Doesn't have the embossed GTS logo here, though. It's very dark, can you guys see? Oh, that's better now. Now you can see. Yes, it doesn't have the embossed GTS logo. It's got this sort of black granite finish. Um, it's not piano black. I wasn't sure at first, but actually I quite like it. The sport design steering wheel, which is actually very cool. Let me hop in. What's cool about this steering wheel is depending on the mode you're in, so right now I'm in Sport Plus, it actually comes up right here. So if I whack it into Sport, boom, and then back into Normal, and it disappears altogether. 
Sport, Sport Plus, it all comes up on the steering wheel. There's also another one for launch control right here. The easiest way to tell it's a GTS is just by the GTS logo right here on the rev counter. As you can tell, it revs all the way up to 7,000 RPM, but I'll give you all the stats later when we're driving it. Here's the famous Panamera spaceship-like center console with all of these buttons which does look like it would be confusing at first, and it is at the very beginning. But once you get used to what every button does, it's pretty easy actually to, to navigate. The GTS also comes with a sport chrono pack, so you get that little clock right there, which I think looks lovely and completes the dashboard. Tons and tons and tons and tons of buttons. I'll run you through them really quickly. Here's all of your radio and sort of stuff to control the screen. Here is all the climate control in the top section right here. Obviously you've got your hazards and that's where you put your wing up and down. There's this button right here. When you go down, more climate control, heated seats in this one. Then you've got sport, sport plus, suspension. So you can have three settings of how hard you want your suspension to be. This is actually a lift for when you're off-roading because yes, this car is four-wheel drive. Traction control off, auto start stop on and off, the exhaust and lane assist and obviously double clutch PDK gearbox. Here's an ashtray, cup holder right here, glove box, I don't know what's in here actually. Oh, a lot of iPhone cables, uh, a phone. Yes, this actually comes, this was an optional extra which is horribly outdated right now, but like a Porsche phone, kind of funky, and then some Porsche suites which have melted, that's kind of disgusting. This one has the four seat configuration, so rather than having a middle seat right there, you have this center console where all that you have uh, heated rear seat buttons and climate control and then a little ashtray and a couple cup holders but yes it's actually quite nice in the back loads of leg room and these sort of sporty bucket seats which are lovely you do have a ski trap right there so you can pull that down and then put your skis through it into a massive boot actually i'll show you the boot right now to open the boot there's a button right here and the boot opens like that uh, what do we have? We have a few clothes back here and some shopping bags. There is a bit of a lip, see it kind of like dives in back here, um, which makes it a pain actually for our dog to get in because our dog's 12 years old, so can't jump all the way in. So she usually goes on the back seat in the end. Got one of these things to hide what you've got in the back, matching in the brown from the interior. Boom. Shut that down. I'm so, so happy for my parents. I know they absolutely love this car. It's so much more exciting. So the Macan S Diesel, another reason we, we decided to get rid of the S Diesel was because of the whole diesel situation and we didn't really want to be having a diesel. So yeah, it's a bit of a completely different car. This thing has a massive and naturally aspirated V8 and it actually sounds pretty great. We pull the car over there so we don't disturb the neighbors too much. And then I'll, I'll give you some cheeky riffs. I'm gonna use a rock to place it. That works, right? <laughs> Right, I'm going to tell you about all of the rest, how it drives, the engine, all that stuff. But why don't we just hop in it and actually drive the car before we get to that. Very bright here. This camera doesn't seem to be going to any lower lighting settings. Very warm as well. Anyways, let's, let's hop in the car, shall we? This is what the revs look like from inside and sound like from inside. Marvellous. The Panamera GTS. Three different modes, normal, sport, and sport plus. Those will allow you to unleash different stages of this naturally aspirated 3.8 liter V8. This thing actually makes 440 horsepower, but it is not the fastest car in the world. It weighs nearly two tons, so it's extremely heavy. Put the windows up so you can hear it properly. That obviously has an effect on the performance. So we're talking 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. So sub five, 0 to 60, which is still very impressive. I tell you what though, it does not feel like it's two tons. I was talking about the power, 440 horsepower, 380 Newton meters of torque. So naturally aspirated. So you need to rev it out. It does rev all the way to 7,000 RPM though. That is the beauty of having the naturally aspirated V8. <gasps> The brakes, steel brakes, but they do the job, I mean, and they have to, because to stop a car of this weight, you need to have some powerful brakes. Now you can get optional carbon ceramics. This car does not have them. I'd like to point out also, this car we didn't get, or well, when I say we, my parents, this is not my car, this is my parents' car. They did not get it brand new, so they did not spec the car. 
it actually has a lot of kilometers on it. It has 65,000 kilometers on the clock, uh, but feels brand new. That's the beauty of Porsche, is that you can have a car like this, 65,000 kilometers, but we've had new tires put on it, new brake pads, everything, and it feels so, so good. And you would not know that it's already been put through its paces quite a bit. I am a Yobbo. I am definitely a Yobbo. I mean, I am the guy who drives a Panamera with the wing engaged in town. So, you know, a bit of an idiot. I do also mostly drive it in Sport Plus, a Panamera. Doesn't make sense, but I think if you're gonna do it in any Panamera, this is the one to do it in. The GTS kind of has, it's like a greatest hits of the Porsche department. So you basically got the Panamera turbo engine in there without the turbos. Thank you very much, that is fantastic. Panamera turbos are slightly overpowered, if you ask me. And we get that noise. Oh, it just sounds so good and so natural. And so many of these cars, I spent a long time in the new BMW M5, sounded good, but sounded very fake. This, I crack a window. Oh, downshift. Such a good sound. And this double clutch gearbox. I mean, you already know, Porsche PDK. It's so, so good. The paddles feel fantastic. The cabin is second to none in terms of luxury. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love this cabin. So much space in the back as well. I wanted to spend some time in this car before I spoke to you about it. Drove it down from Geneva for cruising. I mean, all you do, boom, out of Sport Plus, you just go, you just cruise. The suspension gets much, much more compliant, much more supple, and, you, and it's quiet. I mean, I can put my foot down a bit. There's a little growl from the exhaust, but not much, but that's also because I've got the exhaust button open. If I close it, literally nothing now you get a bit more body roll like this a bit less feel in the steering but for cruising this car is amazing adaptive cruise control it's got double glazed uh, windows so you can't hear anything coming from outside and all you have to do push one button flick it into manual and you've got a 440 horsepower beast it is incredible what they've been able to do in terms of making a car like this be fun and be enjoyable and be fast, they've nailed it. I'm so, so happy for my parents and mostly for my father who's always wanted a Porsche. He got the mechanic, yes, it was a Porsche, but it was a Macan S diesel. I feel like it was lacking that sort of Porsche feeling and that special feeling, whereas this, this has brought that to life and I, I, I couldn't be happier for him. I know this has been a lifelong dream for him, so to be able to have this, is incredible to end this video i am gonna whack it into exhaust off drive and just cruise to chat to you guys and do what this car does so well which is just cruise along these roads coming from someone who was not a panamera fanboy i love this car i've been lucky enough to drive the new panamera turbo s to drive the old panamera turbo and you may think i'm biased but honestly this is the one I would go for. The Panamera GTS with the naturally aspirated engine. It's a gem. It's really such a cool car. And I don't think they're gonna put the naturally aspirated V8 in the next one. I think it's gonna be a twin turbo V6. In the new Panamera, I do think that the new Panameras look better from the outside and from the inside. But for the driving experience, we won't know until we drive it, but I don't think it'll be anything to match this car. So grateful to be able to drive this car. It's really a privilege, so I feel incredibly lucky to be able to be in this position. So happy for my parents to have this, to cruise around in. My mum and my father both love driving, and they both really enjoy this car and actually drive it around in Sport Plus most of the time as well. So I'm so, so happy for them. A few things which aren't great about this car, Fuel consumption, not ideal. This one does have the 100 litre tank though, so you can go for a long time on long cruises in this car on one tank, which is fantastic, but a naturally aspirated V8 in a two-ton car, not the best on fuel consumption. And it is big for around town. It is a very, very large car. I've enjoyed making this video. I'll be back in London in a few days, but before that, a few more days in Monaco. As always, guys, thank you so much for your eternal support 
and all of your kind comments. If you enjoyed this, a thumbs up really does mean the world. If you want to see the videos and get notifications as well, you have to press the little bell button next to the subscribe. That means that you'll get notified when my videos go live because YouTube have this weird system now where you don't necessarily get notified. But I'm sure you guys watch a lot of YouTube, so you know that. And I'll see you again very, very soon with another video. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Hey. Let's go. Back.